Do it. Do it! Do it. Do it. Do it. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. It's your pal Noms here, and today I want to shed my thoughts on some news that's recently hit the Halo community in regards to the upcoming Halo Infinite. 343 recently put out onto their blog post that they'll be introducing what's called armor coding into the Halo Infinite customization system for multiplayer. Now, this is really rubbed fans the wrong way and it's been a series of frustrations for fans in regards to Halo Infinite. We've waited five years for Halo Infinite. We got a very underwhelming, gonna go as far as to say piss poor, reveal and showcase for the game. Not that the game was bad, I liked what I saw and I was encouraged for what we could expect on release, but to release a build that was so subpar in terms of its presentation was possibly one of 343's biggest mistakes to date in regards to their marketing for Halo Infinite. There have been leaks of ex-employees leaving 343 and leaving piss poor reflections of the company, citing that management have terrible communication with their staff, their very talented staff by all accounts, and that their reliance on outsourcing and not being able to make up their mind with the direction of the game is causing stalls in development. On top of that, the game was delayed till 2021, which I think was a good decision, but now we get told that 343 are introducing this armor coding system. And it's probably the second biggest controversy that's hit the Halo community, apart from the July showcase and the terrible graphics. Anyway, I'm going to read through this article real quick, just to get a baseline for the topic, and then I'm going to give you my thoughts on what's going on, and hopefully provide a fresh take. Anyway, it says, Halo Infinite 343 Industries explains how armor coatings work. Customization in Halo Infinite looks pretty interesting. The article goes on to say, In a new blog post, Halo developer 343 Industries provided some new details about how Halo Infinite's armor coatings work, which is something many have been curious about since the developer teased the Monarch armor coating. According to 343's lead player investment designer, so lead player investment designer, I'm guessing is the person who designs the progression system and customization, someone who designs incentive for the player to keep, well, playing, obviously. And in the past, I suppose it was the lead player investment designer who designed the rec system in Halo 5. And if so, fuck you, sir. Fuck you indeed. Anyway, 343's lead player investment designer, Christopher Bloom, coatings are a, quote, seven-layer shader that allows us to put any artist-authored color, material, or pattern into seven channels and apply it to in-game items like weapons, armor, and vehicles. These coatings will replace the primary and secondary color system that was present in previous Halo games. This is interesting for a few reasons. Firstly, it marks the first time in Halo history that players will be able to change patterns on their armor, aside from emblems, and what material it's made out of. Options like these have become more popular in recent years. Destiny 2's shader system comes to mind. Yeah, so it's no wonder Christopher Blome used the term shader when describing the armor coding patterns in Halo Infinite. It's not as if it hasn't taken enough inspiration from Destiny. Now it has to go and do this, but I digress. So it's cool to see that Halo is embracing these customization options as well, although I have to admit I'm not a fan of color choice being tied to them. Well, you and me both. Secondly, we know that the coatings aren't just going to be for armor, they are going to be coatings for weapons and vehicles as well. In the blog post, 343 Industries shared a look at the Azure vehicle coating on a Warthog, which you can see below. Well, now that is interesting, considering that we've never had vehicle customization of this nature before, except recently in uh, the 2020 Definitive Master Chief Collection, which was released on PC and updated for Xbox as well. And I'm all for that, by the way. I'm glad they're bringing this style of customization, uh, at least for vehicles and weapons, into Infinite. Though, of course, Halo 4 and Halo 5 did have skins for weapons. Anyway, the developer also gave fans a sneak peek of the Redshift armor coding in the post, which you can see above. This coding can be obtained by purchasing any Xbox or Halo merchandise from GameStop between the dates of November 9th and December 30th, 2020. Yeah, they're, they're really trying to push that merch, aren't they? And redeeming the code you get with it on the Halo Waypoint Code Redemption page, the armor coding will be instantly available to you 
in Halo Infinite when the game comes out. What do you think of how codings work in Halo Infinite? Personally, I'm excited to see how deep the customization options go, even if it will feel weird not to have a traditional type of Halo customization in the new game. Halo Infinite is currently expected to release in 2021 on the Xbox Series X, Series S, Xbox One, and on Windows 10 PCs. Okay, so that's about the end of the article right there. All right, now lots to unpack. I'm gonna go through this with two different perspectives, okay? The first is gonna be from the perspective of a consumer, and the second is gonna be from the perspective of a Halo fan, a lifelong Halo fan. So from the perspective of a consumer, meaning I want my money's worth, this is the first for the Halo franchise to not have a standard primary and secondary color system. And instead what they're planning to do is to have these codings, right? It was detailed somewhere that I believe it was the Monarch coding that they were advertising as a bonus. That is actually, according to 343 Industries, worth $5 USD, meaning it's about $7 AUD, the Australian dollar where I come from. That is absurd for any armor coding. Any at all, all right? It's it's patterns, it's colors at the end of the day. You're telling me I gotta spend money on colors, 343. That is absurd. That is, that is an absolute joke. Now, I wouldn't mind spending my money on, if it was worth the price, that is, I wouldn't mind spending my money on an armor effect like inclement weather from Halo Reach or the flaming helmet. I'd pay for a flaming helmet. I'd give you two, two maybe three dollars for that. Looks cool. Maybe a, a Halloween pumpkin helmet or a, uh, the haunted helmet from Halo Reach. There are, I'm not against microtransactions in Halo Infinite, understand. I just want the microtransactions to be worth my money. Now, this is the first time that there won't be a, a primary and secondary color scheme for free in Halo since Halo began, right? However, Halo Infinite is the first Halo released, or is going to release, which will have free multiplayer. Regardless if you purchase the game or not, the multiplayer will be free for PC, Xbox, on all Microsoft platforms. You don't have to buy a Halo Infinite, but you'll be able to play the multiplayer. Everyone is going to be able to play free of charge, all right? Now that's the first thing. Secondly, this is the first Halo installment released on what I would assume, according to what Microsoft has said, all first party studio releases from Microsoft will be on Xbox Game Pass, meaning that Halo Infinite will be essentially the first free to play Halo game ever. If you have an Xbox Game Pass, you're gonna get Halo Infinite as soon as it comes out for free. Because you're not paying you're not paying 343. You're paying Microsoft for their service, and Microsoft are providing Halo Infinite along with dozens, hundreds of other games. Now, the first time I realized what an absolute catch Xbox Game Pass was, was Gears of War 5. Gears 5 released on Game Pass, much to all of our shocks. Microsoft wasn't kidding when they said you would get it for free if you signed up for Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, which at the time I think was offering like a, a $1 sign-up fee. I think they've changed it a bit since then, but we couldn't believe it. We played Gears 5, everything it had to offer, campaign, multiplayer, everything. With Game Pass, it was absolutely free. And I was like, all right, thank you. And I was like, oh, but this is just like a one-time thing. You know, we'll take the win. Uh, and then Outer Worlds came out. Outer Worlds by Obsidian, another first-party Microsoft studio. Outer Worlds from launch was free on Game Pass. And then, of course, you have uh, the third-party games that Microsoft are making deals to bring the Game Pass for free. I just played Doom Eternal for free on Game Pass on my Xbox One. Granted, I, I bought it at launch on Steam, but now I can play it for free on my Xbox if I wanted to. No Man's Sky, the definitive version of No Man's Sky is still getting better and better and better. Played that for free on Game Pass, 35 Studios. So this is the first Halo game with Game Pass that'll be sold on Game Pass for free. And please, for the love of God, if you're listening to this and you don't have Game Pass, get Game Pass right now. All right, I'm going to make a video on it at some point. You will have too many games to play and you will spend $15 a month. Get Game Pass. Anyway, Halo Infinite is going to be Microsoft's biggest release uh, in the, its opening year with the Series X. And it's going to be free on Game Pass. It's going to be free. Granted, if you if you pay for it outright without getting Game Pass, uh, you're kind of shit out of luck. So don't do it. Just get Game Pass for the love of God. Now, those people are going to be shit out of luck as a consumer. But Microsoft are providing the option to get Game Pass and get Halo Infinite. And if they stick to their word, we're going to get it for free. The campaign, for free. Multiplayer, regardless of Game Pass, for free. 
extra DLCs, uh, firefight mode, Spartan Ops mode, whatever the hell they want to add in, maybe that'll cost an extra $10 or something. I don't know. But at the moment, it's looking out to be the first Halo game released that's as about as consumer-friendly as you can be. So, as a consumer, does that justify the armor coding microtransactions? Now, it's tricky. Like I said, I wanted to sort of approach this neutrally. I feel like 343 does get a bit too much flack from the community. Uh, they, they make a move, any move, and there's going to be, you know, because the Halo community is so, bi- is so polarized at the moment, um, you know, there's going to be haters, there's going to be people who love the decision, those people don't, are going to be indifferent. I'm trying to approach this from a neutral standpoint. As a consumer... Yes, the microtransactions would be justified, but it, it depends on the implementation. However, I don't think armor coatings or something as basic as color should be charged for any money. I think it's incredibly lazy, and I feel like 343 are now trying to ride the wave of the new MCC customization. Because MCC, for those of you who are up to date, has been getting more and more content delivered to its customization in the form of skins and visor colors, primarily. Now, I love this as an implementation, and mind you, on Master Chief Collection, it's free, uh, but I'm sort of sitting there scratching my head saying, okay, 343, you can do these colors. I mean, I'm an armchair fucking developer, right? But correct me if I'm wrong, colors are kind of lazy, if you know what I mean? Like, it's a color. Just like armor shaders, you can say, oh, but it's seven. Pa- it's, a, it's a pattern of seven different colors and materials. I don't care. It's still lazy. It's still just a color and a pattern, for goodness sake. Um, I want customization that's worth my money. I, sh- I don't think paying for color should be a thing in any game. Any game, AAA, indie, full priced or free. Make the armor customization worth my time. If it's a whole, if it's a full armor set with like again a Halloween themed, Christmas themed, or whatever, yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll fork out like two or three bucks. Uh, not for colors though, three or three. I mean, again, I'm more forgiving. Granted that Microsoft is re- is released that you guys are releasing this is essentially a free Halo game more or less. I'm more forgiving, but five US dollars for an armor coding? Are you out of your mind? And this is where I bring this back to Gears Five. I'm an avid Gears of War lover. I love it. I played it, all the Gears of War games. Uh, they're still knocking it out of the park with every release, except for Gears Judgment. All right, but we don't talk about that. With Gears of War Five, there the customization and price of iron, which was the in-game currency to buy shit with. For those of you who play the game, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The The prices are jacked. It's like $5 for an emblem, $3 for a blood spray, shit you're not, not even, ever going to see, uh, $10, 10 or $15 for a character skin. And this is where I kind of draw the line because the, the actual only decent and worthwhile customization in Gears 5 from a microtransaction level is the character skins. You get characters from the past games used for PvP and PvE, has their look, has their voice actor, but the characters also have their own traits and specialist abilities. Meaning you can play as the character with the character skin, but you play differently with that character. The character's purchase has an actual impact on gameplay, but it's not an advantage per se. It provides a new playstyle for the player, and that is where I that is what I absolutely consider to be an excellent form of microtransaction. Again, I I, I think the, the character skins uh, and abilities in Gears 5 are absolutely worth the price. It's all the, well, the stuff that I'd equate to armor coatings that I think is a joke. The prices are jacked, like jacked, in Gears 5. But there is some stuff that I think is well worth the purchase, more or less. And not to mention in Gears 5, there are ways to unlock uh, some of these items through in-game play that you can just pay through microtransactions. It's still a hefty grind, and that's the point. It's trying to encourage you to spend. But again, I was more inclined. I didn't end up paying for any microtransactions. I almost did, but it just didn't end up happening. Uh, and I would have if I was still playing the game. I haven't played it in a while. It's nothing against the game, personally. It's just, I just haven't played it. So I didn't end up paying for any of the microtransactions. But I got I got to keep reminding myself, it was a free game. Microsoft gave it to us for free on Game Pass. I still haven't paid a cent for Gears 5. And I played probably 120 hours of it, right? This is going to be a similar experience for Halo Infinite. Campaign, multiplayer, whatever. So 343 want to make their money back. Well, Microsoft, first and foremost, wants to make their money back. And 343 have to figure out a way to do it. That's fair. I don't mind the the idea of in-game customization that's done through microtransactions. These armor coatings, I don't think are the way to do it. Uh, Purely from a consumer standpoint, if you're going to have these armor coatings in there, you've got to bring down the prices at the very least. A dollar. I'll pay, I'll I'll meet you halfway, 343. I'll, I'll pay you a dollar. A dollar. 
US for an armor coding. That's it. Make it worth my money. I appreciate the game being released on Game Pass. I'm a massive Halo fan. But as a consumer, I'd pay a dollar for an armor coding. I still don't think you should do it. I think you should be a bit more creative. That goes for MCC too. Bring in actual armor. Bring in actual good customization. Don't just slap a paint skin on there. Look at how extensive the customization was in Halo Reach and Halo 4 free of charge. That is the baseline, 343. You gotta do better than that before you can start charging, okay? So yes, $5 for an armor coating is very sleazy and very greedy on behalf of 343 and Microsoft. But at the same time, free multiplayer, free on Game Pass, there's a new precedent on both ends of the spectrum here that's consumer friendly and non-consumer friendly. And I think that needs to be put into account because I don't see anyone from the Halo community talking about this. I see them just uh, whinging and whining about, oh, it's too greedy and oh, 343, why are you being so scummy by denying us the option to pick our own primary and secondary color. Like, guys, remember, this is going to be a Game Pass release, and like it or not, Microsoft have to make their money back. It just depends on how they're going to do it, and we can't jump the gun too quickly. We have to see what it's going to look like first. I'll admit, on paper, it does not sound good, but I'm willing to meet them halfway as a consumer because of how consumer-friendly, at least in terms of price, that the release of the game is going to be, assuming Microsoft keep their word. Now I'm going to talk as a Halo fan and a long-time lover of the, of the franchise. The ability to not pick your primary and secondary color. I mean, I think I've already covered this kind of... Maybe I went into fan territory before when I was talking as a consumer. You need... Come on. Being able to choose your primary and secondary color is such a simple thing. Maybe take out some of the layers on the coding. Maybe take out two of those layers. Maybe the armor coding can be five layers. Just allow us to pick our primary and secondary color. Granted, I fucking hated the primary and secondary color palette system in all previous Halos. All of them. Uh, you know, Halo 3's was alright. Halo 5's actually I thought was pretty good in terms of a color palette. But remember the, how, how shit the colors were in Halo Reach, Halo 2, Halo Combat Evolved. Uh, Halo 4's color palette was okay. I've always wanted just a free color spectrum like there was in El Dorito. There's no color palette like in Halo 3. You just got to choose any shade you wanted. Primary, secondary, tertiary, and the freedom was oh so good. So at the very least, if these armor coatings have a better color selection than the color palettes Bungie had, I'm going to be happy, at least on that account, as a fan. Though, the ability taken away from us to be able to select those just basic colors is a joke. I don't care how high or low they're going to charge for those damn coatings. Not to mention 343, you said we were going to have Halo Reach style customization... And again, Halo Reach should be the minimum you shoot for. That's the baseline. You should be looking to excel from that. Armor coatings, again, it's like saying, oh, but you can choose uh, more. You can have a third or fourth emblem layer. Like, that's nothing. Armor coatings are nothing. They're just patterns, paint jobs you slap onto the Spartan. Where's the creativity? Why can't we choose our individual gauntlets, our individual gloves, our individual boots, our individual shins, our individual knees, a backpack of some kind, armor scarring, damaged armor, uh, robot armor, a plethora of new armor abilities and effects. Like, where's your imagination? Just a fucking paint slap? A paint slap. That's what, they don't call them armor coatings. A paint slap, 343. Do you really want to set your fucking... Your sights as low as Destiny 2. That's that, that's what you want. That's what you're basing this off. That's what you want to shoot for. Pull your head out of your ass as developers or as development. Get your management's head out of their ass and get them to show some bloody creativity. It ain't rocket science. Make some good customization. You had great customization in Halo 4. I loved Halo 4's customization. Very underrated in my opinion. Halo Reaches was great, but the credit system was kind of broken. So if you make a unlock system with Halo 4's armor customization at base, at base, I expect twice as good as Halo 4's customization. Then maybe I'll start thinking about paying for a bloody armor coat or for a pa- for a paint slap. Then maybe I'll, I'll shill out one dollar for a paint slap. You've had five years of development. You've had all the money in the world Microsoft have thrown at you. You want to monetize the game? That's fine. Make it worth my goddamn while. Make the prices worth it and deliver an excellent, best ever, up to date. At launch release for a Halo game in history. Deliver us that. Come on, 343. Anyway, look, those are my thoughts on the armor customization controversy. Uh, Let me know if you guys share my thoughts in the comments below. 
Like I said, this is a very unique style release for a Halo game. It's the first of its kind. So while I understand the fan outrage, it's important to take all factors into account before actually assessing the situation. And, you know, ultimately we haven't seen enough to really make a definitive judgment yet. Granted, on paper it doesn't sound good. And it's 343's fault for not sharing with us any more details about the game beyond that disgrace of a showcase back in July. Again, I liked what the showcase showed us in terms of gameplay, but to do it on that build, come on 343. Anyway, thanks for listening to this little rant. I very much appreciate your time. Uh, subscribe for more content if you're interested. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for staying to the end of the video. You are a legend and I'll see you next time.